Okay, I feel like this is long overdue, especially heading into Marvel Phase 5 in, what, two weeks at this point? Maybe even a week by the time this video comes out? Crap. Thor Love and Thunder. Is this movie bad? Probably. Does this movie have way too many jokes? For sure. Did we completely misuse the character of Gore and well, waste a perfectly good opportunity with Christian Bale in the MCU just to make the character another trademark one-off MCU villain? Yes. Yes, we did. Was it obvious that Taika Waititi or the leads over at Marvel Studios couldn't even be bothered to go back and watch some of their own source material in the form of their own films in the franchise or even comics from the storylines they're basing their film off of? Yes. Yes, it was. So, hardly anyone turned up, except for my mum and her boyfriend, who I hate. Speaking of futures, I was forging one of my own, now that my body's grown back, with a dude I met called Dwayne. Except for my mum and her boyfriend, who I hate. What the fuck? From someone who is starting to now suffer permanent brain aneurysms from Marvel's Phase 4's filler arc, and God, we are all happy that that's over. Thor Love and Thunder was the first of its kind, a film that I actually didn't even go see in the theaters and basically wrote it off as shit just like the rest of Phase 4. Yes, that is where I'm at now. Imagine Marvel getting to the point where they no longer even receive the benefit of the doubt. That is crazy. But with the release of Thor Love and Thunder on Disney Plus back in early September, I figured, hey, why not? I asked my brother if it was a movie that he was capable of ingesting again. Obviously, he said no, but he watched it anyway, and we embarked on the quote-unquote worst Thor movie of the franchise. Obviously, judging from the title of this video, it's not like I think Thor Love and Thunder is true shit, and I don't think the movie nearly was as bad as everybody says, and it's definitely not the worst in the franchise. But with that being said, I also do not have the full confidence to call this movie good. And honestly, as soon as I said that, there's no way that this movie is good. I just have half the nerve to just call it mid. With my expectations a little tempered, I'm sure that made the experience of the movie a lot different than when people were first watching it in the theaters. Going in, I truly expected a joke around every 30 seconds. Thor to be a complete and utter disaster of a character with absolutely no resemblance of his older character progression. And let me tell you, I expected much, much, much more Lady Thor or Mighty Thor or whatever. A true clown show with a movie title. But I'm pleasantly surprised that wasn't really the case at all. The story goes as such. Picking up with our mighty hero Thor and the Guardians of the Galaxy sometime after the events of Endgame, not really sure how much time they've been really vague with their timeline in Marvel Phase 4, but they did show us a getting back in shape montage, so no more Fat Thor. Yay. Yeah, good riddance, you fat tubagoo. After receiving a distress call from Shiv, or more importantly known as the Goddess of Nutcracking, Thor then takes his leave from the Guardians of the Galaxy in order to go see what has been going on in his absence. You see, Shiv, or Shiv, I'm going to pronounce that wrong the entire video, explains how she and her fellow comrades have been absolutely bodied by a man named Gore the God Butcher. With his plans to kill all of the gods, with the means to do so with his god-killing Necrosword, and with his next location being revealed to be New Asgard, Thor rushes back home in order to inform and back up Asgard's new leader, Valk, or Tessa Thompson. With new Asgard now being turned into a tourist resort of some, uh, very questionable business choices, Thor arrives just in time in order to fight off Gore's first attack on the city with King Valk, and well, you already know who shows up now. Jane? Oh yes sir, Jane Foster has entered the chat, and it's not just Jane, she's already going full on Lady Thor with the abilities and the battle experience I guess to just handle a broken Mau Mau like it's your grandma's butter knife. And while I imagine that most of you were in the theaters might have been asking yourself, uh, how did this happen? 
Well, you see, in the almost completely off-screen relationship of Jane and Thor, Thor inscribes to Mau Mau to always protect Jane, because I guess out of his hundreds of years of conquest, Natalie Portperson was just the one, I guess. And after being diagnosed with stage 4 terminal cancer, Mau Mau came a-calling to save the day, and now we have Lady Thor. And don't get me wrong, you do not have to tell me how absolutely stupid and nonsensical it is for Thor to just now have this type of ability to transfer the power of Mau Mau. Like, why couldn't you use this type of ability on Loki, or Heimdall, or Iron Man, or literally any of your trusted Avengers? It would have definitely come in handy a couple of times for sure, but whatever, I guess. With the trio of Valk, Thor, and Lady Thor being able to hold off the initial attack, Gore managed to capture some Asgardian children, including Heimdall's son and new heir to the Bifrost, Axel. Obviously, a rescue mission is put into action, and the three head off to God City in order to recruit some backup. And holy shit, fuck me. During what might be literally the worst scenes in the entire movie, nothing even works. There's no consequences. The only thing that happens is we end up getting Zeus's lightning bolt, and I don't have to explain how stupid and nonsensical it is to just have Zeus's lightning bolt because it goes back to how the fact can we just transfer powers. What's the point of them? Crap. Anyway, as I said, none of that even works. So Thor, Natalie Thor, and Woman King are against the God Butcher in an attempt to save the Asgardian children, stop Gore from reaching eternity to destroy all the gods, and save the universe. Again, in Marvel Phase 4. And we're done. That basically sums up the entirety of the movie. Now, yes, Marvel completely wasted a character as badass and menacing as Gore the God Butcher was in the comics, and even if Christian Bale was the type to not want to do multiple MCU movies, it was a complete disaster of character writing to have Thor, yes, you heard me right, Thor, kill more gods on screen than Gore the God Butcher did, as well as his hypocritical motivations of wanting to kill all of the gods because they don't care. Yet his plan was to kidnap kids in order to lure Thor to him because he knows he'll come save the kids. So, okay. It was just rushed development from the very beginning with Gore because he wasn't the main focus of the film. Moving us on to Natalie Portperson's Lady Thor. And let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. I didn't even hate her character. In reality, I was disappointed that she was a character that died at the very end. I would say that Marvel's Phase Force filler arc in the introduction of the quote-unquote strong female character has given the MCU audience a lot of PTSD when it comes to every female character introduced. And while that's rightfully the case, I just didn't feel like she was written the same way at all. She was vulnerable, not only physically, but emotionally as well, understandably trying to push away the inevitable fate of her stage 4 cancer, while simultaneously trying to figure out what's important to her and mend her relationship with Thor. It's just commonplace now in the MCU that as a new female character, she has the full capability and battle experience to fight alongside with some of the most seasoned characters. But that's simply something that us, the audience, is going to have to overlook. Because it's not going away. My point is, when you look over the nonsensical and, I mean there are a lot of them, insecure jokes throughout the film, Thor Love and Thunder isn't a good film but I can easily say it is fun in a phase of dog shit and, well, whatever is worse than that. Is that like a personal attack or something? And now don't get me wrong, Thor is an idiot, but throughout the film when Thor has to be Thor, he is. He's the person I know and the person I love and the person I've been growing up with, well, not growing up, but watching, I guess, for the past 10 years. Natalie Portperson's Lady Thor wasn't an arrogant, all-knowing, obnoxious lady hero that doesn't need any help at all, and Valk was by far the character that benefited the most in the form of development in this film. Taika Waititi is a hit or miss when it comes to his style, and while it doesn't necessarily hit for me when it comes to the comedy aspect, especially in these Thor films, I can appreciate some takeaways and some hidden growths of our characters deep, deep, deep underneath the surface of the screaming goats. 
If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I think I have a couple videos coming up, like with The Walking Dead and with the menu. And, well, we have Ant-Man coming up, so I know we're all just going to watch that. I want to thank you guys all for watching my video. And as I said, I didn't really think Thor Love and Thunder was super terrible. But I definitely want to hear all of you guys' comments. So make sure you guys comment down below. You guys know I pretty much live in there. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today.